The Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Hello, welcome to The Harvest Show. And coming up on today's show, she actually punched herself in the eye, but why? Actress and author Pamela Capone shares how humor and hope heals the brokenhearted. And Pastor Mark Lance offers practical principles for resolving conflict in today's Motivational Minute. Blame versus responsibility. We're also going to hear from Middle East correspondent Brian Bush. He's on location in Jerusalem with an update on the much-needed humanitarian aid efforts in Mosul. A lot of good things coming your way on today's program. And we're starting off here with Drew Sumrall, who joins us on the set. Good to see you, Drew. Good to see you. I, I like that. How to, how to resolve conflict and punching yourself <laughs> in the eye. It's gonna, we're going to cover all of our bases here today. Yes, we are. Yeah. And we do want to talk about the... Uh, Spread the word campaign that's taking place right now, or in the in the midst of a, uh, a protracted campaign to get a hundred thousand Bibles Our out around the world. Our hundred twenty day spread the word uh, camp Bible campaign. I think today is a great day to talk about it. Today is uh, October the seventeenth, which mm -hmm. would have been uh, my dad Pete Summerall's sixty third birthday. Uh, for those who probably already know, he passed on in, in December. Right. But spread the word was uh, was his program, his idea. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It started. Uh, under him and uh, through his leadership, we passed out several hundred thousand Bibles, and we want right. to keep that going. In fact, intensify our efforts, and uh, yeah. this is the first step of that, uh, where we're deciding. You know, in the past we've done some work with Feed the Hungry, but let's really focus on that yeah. uh, as a distribution point, where we go to places all over the world. We're passing out food. You know, seems like such a great idea. Let's empower the local church as well with passing out these Bibles. And we have the Every Child Every Day program. Right. Where we're right. feeding 100 over 130, 136,000 yeah. kids. Yeah. Which is just incredible. Let's get a Bible in the hands of every last one of these kids. And you know, Drew, you talked about leaving a living legacy. This is what your father has mm -hmm. left for us to do. This is us fulfilling the great commission to take the gospel around the world Absolutely. to people who would Th otherwise not have a Bible. This is not ministry in the abstract. <laughs> you know, no, sometimes it is not. When, you know, when you see television ministries talking about what they're doing, it, it can be a little bit sort of, what are we really talking about here? Mm -hmm. This is very tangible. We are feeding people and we want to give them a Bible at the very same time. This is as, as tangible and as real, I believe, as ministry gets. It, it really is, and uh, I've been privileged to see the impact of it on the field. And I know your your father's goal when this, he first started Spread the Word was, can we possibly hand out 10,000 Bibles? Yeah. And uh, that's expanded to over 700,000. And it really does go hand in hand. And, and being there and seeing what, what how this works together, uh, honestly, in some cases, you know, when people get that food that they so desperately need and they see a Bible in that packet, it's like, the food almost becomes a secondary thing because the impact that the Word of God can have and the hope that it brings far exceeds uh, uh, you know, what, what a 30-day supply of, of rice meals may be or, or emergency food rations may be. And it truly goes back to what, what uh, the Scripture says that you know, man doesn't live by bread alone, yeah. but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And, you know, it's nice to have goals. I mean, I'd love to see us pass out a million Bibles. I'd love to see it pass out a million Bibles every single year. But what I really want, would love to see is it's so many we can't even keep track anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of thinking that I want the folks at home to really latch on to. That's, that's my vision where it's, it's so big we almost can't even keep track of how many we're passing out anymore. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Drew, and it's affordable. I mean, we're saying give $5 to give out one Bible. You know, a, a case of 36 Bibles, $180. I mean, when I think about what I spend on lunch, mm -hmm. you know, every day, yeah coffee, going out just to have a, a leisurely drink or something, coffee that is, um, you know, how affordable that is. But to someone else who would otherwise not have a Bible, it's very precious, isn't it? Well, and the, 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 the valuable, the intangible value that it creates in the local mm -hmm. church in this community, because right. this yeah. is what we have always done with Feed the Hungry Worm. Mm -hmm. We're not just showing up as a bunch of Americans to pass out food and leave. We always have worked through and still do through a local church right there in that community. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the food that they're going to receive, but this other impact in their life. It's all going to channel back through that local church and empower them. And that's the ultimate aim and our ultimate goal is that 
that local church is there in those communities 24-7, 365 days a year. Uh, they may, the folks may or may not remember the name of Feed the Hungry or, or let's see broadcasting or spread the word. And they, but don't, need, gonna, and and they, they don't, don't necessarily need to. Need to. They're going to be connected to that local church. Absolutely. And that local church, as you mentioned, being empowered to meet the tangible needs and the spiritual needs of the communities they serve. And uh, just as an update, I know we've, we've been talking about Nicaragua, Honduras, and Uganda, and, and Bibles are on the way to those nations nations as folks have been sponsoring those Bibles and you have been calling in. We've got uh, maybe about seven, 8,000 of those already out. And then we've got another 10,000 uh, action Bibles that are going to Zimbabwe, uh, which are a, a unique product specifically. You mentioned the Every Child Every Day program and connecting with kids. This is a graphic Bible that really uh, touches and, and digs deep into the heart and the mind of, of, and the soul of children when they read it because it's so visual. Mm -hmm. And in addition to uh, the Action Bibles, there are 50,000 stories of Jesus Christ, which is just a truncated version of the life of Jesus Christ that are going as well. And geared for kids. So we're talking about 60,000 individual units of, of Bibles and literature mm -hmm. going out so the need is immediate. That's why we need people to right now call the number on the screen, 1-800-365-3732, and get involved because it's always the right time. The time is now. We don't want to wait till tomorrow. We want to get this thing done right now. And what Lacey Broadcasting is doing in partnership with Feed the Hungry is getting the Bibles there, and that's where you come in. Uh, the Bibles are procured. They can be had, but it's a question of getting them from where they are to where they need to be, and that's where your $5 per Bible comes in to get those Bibles and to get them into the hands of local churches ministering to children and hungry souls around the world. Give us a call right now, 1-800-365-3732 with your best gift. Take that $5 multiple uh, increment and multiply it as best as you can. We'd love to hear what you've got to say. If it's about spreading the word, if it's about things that the word of God has done in your life, you can join the conversation on Facebook, Twitter, and live at lacy.com. We've got the world news coming up next. It's Monday, October 17, 2016, and here's what's happening in your world. Iraq's army has begun the task of trying to reclaim the nation's second largest city from the clutches of ISIS. Special forces and police, together with an umbrella organization of militias, made major advances in their battle to retake Mosul today, securing ground in Kayara. Some fighters are camped out in abandoned homes as tens of thousands of troops massed around the city have overwhelmed the few military bases in the area. European Union foreign ministers are keeping an eye on the Mosul battle, but they're also debating whether to extend sanctions against the Syrian regime. Political efforts to secure a ceasefire and humanitarian aid have faltered. The continuing crisis in Aleppo that shames humanity, frankly, the, the bombing of civilians, uh, the indiscriminate slaughter of uh, innocent women and children taking place in that city. France's foreign minister blames Russia, saying it's locked in the logic of destruction alongside the Assad regime. A Republican Party office in Hillsborough, North Carolina, was torched by a Molotov cocktail over the weekend, a bottle filled with flammable liquid thrown through the window of the Orange County Republican Party headquarters. This is a horrific, horrific act of political terrorism one that we will not succumb to, and one that we will answer. An adjacent building was spray painted with the words Nazi Republicans leave town or else. Russian President Vladimir Putin has told journalists who work in his media corps they are possibly being watched by American intelligence agencies. Putin made the comment Sunday in India where he was attending an economic summit. Putin's warning comes as tensions with the U.S. over Syria and other issues have escalated. And China has launched a pair of astronauts into space on a mission to dock with an experimental space station and remain aboard for 30 days. The Shenzhou 11 mission took off from the edge of the Gobi Desert in northern China this morning aboard a Long March 2F carrier rocket. It will dock with the Tiangong 2 space station precursor facility within two days. They're hoping to have that space station fully operational by 2022. Coming up later, Brian Bush has the latest news from Israel. But up next, ask actress and author Pamela Capone shares how humor and hope heal the brokenhearted. 
right back with more Harvest after this. Imagine a world where every man, woman, and child had a Bible. There'd be more love, more compassion, more peace. The Word of God has the power to transform broken lives, but only if we share it with those who don't know the good news. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Help us spread the word by giving to LaCie Broadcasting. We're teaming up with Feed the Hungry to get Bibles into as many hands as possible. Each $5 you give between now and December 31st will provide a Bible to one person. We need your help to send 100,000 Bibles to the people of Nicaragua, Uganda, and Honduras. A gift of $5 provides one Bible, $25 sends five, and a gift of $180 provides a case of 36 Bibles to those in need. Any amount will help. Please don't wait. Pray about your gift and then call 1-800-365-3732 to give today. When my guest today looked into the mirror one morning, she realized she had punched herself in the eye, had given herself a black eye. She unknowingly punched herself in the eye, I should say. Pamela Capone is an author, actress, and a speaker who uses humor to talk Jennifer about self-sabotage and the grace of God. Welcome to The Hi, Harvest Show. Thank you. Nice okay, so you. we have been waiting with bated breath to <laughs> find out what happened with you when you punched yourself in the eye. Well, one morning after a rough night's sleep, which is not really atypical for me, I struggle with insomnia. Mm -hmm. So I shuffled over to the bathroom sink and I looked in the mirror and I saw that I had a black eye. And I thought, what? How? And then I had a flash of memory. I'll, although I couldn't recall the dream itself, I remember distinctively waking to the yelp of my own voice, my fist balled up, leaving the scene of the crime in my eye. I clocked myself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and in that moment, I had sort of an epiphany, and I thought, mm -hmm. gosh, I wonder how many ways and how, do, how often I punch my, how often I self-sabotage, how often I beat myself up in an unconscious state. Mm -hmm. And you talk a lot about in your, in your project, I Punch Myself in the Eye, you know, where that all came from. I guess, you know, take us back to growing up. You were an orphan. Um, your mm -hmm. biological parents did not raise you, have um, adoptive right. parents. Right. Talk about that. And being a child of nine children, right. what was that like growing up? Well, I was the baby of nine children, and we lived in downtown L.A., and we were all split up. Um, at the time, I was 18 months old, and we all got split up into different homes and facilities, and I was rescued by my mom and dad, Joe and Jean Shirola, who raised me um, literally on the spur of the moment. Um, we were all brought to a church um, one evening because someone who had befriended the family was really trying to help and they knew that we were all gonna be placed into the system. Mm -hmm. So he just said to the congregation, um, can, can any of you take some of these kids for the next two weeks until we figure out what we're gonna do? And my mom's hand just shot up and she said, I'll take the baby. Mm -hmm. And my dad was on board and they thought they were going to take me home for two weeks, and they ended up keeping me. Mm -hmm. And their um, their demonstration of grace and compassion in that moment forever impacted me. I mm -hmm. think I am by nature an empathetic person, but because of what happened to me, because of that act of love, um, that really made me who I am. And did you stay connected with your siblings then growing up? Yeah. Are they all still yeah. in that same area, in that same church community? We're not in the same area. We're kind of spread out um, th that throughout the states, but we're all, we all know each other, and they're all really, really special, sweet, um, talented, really artistic, sensitive people. I'm really proud of them. What do you mean by self-sabotage? How do we do that? For me, I overthink. I'm just a chronic mm -hmm. overthinker, and I struggle with fear. Um, yeah, I think, I think mostly just overthinking, thinking about things too much and not just resting that he's got it in control and that it's not all about what I can handle and what I can do. That um, just, it's, yeah, it's about not really having the faith I, I know that's available to me. Mm -hmm. And how did you develop that over time? Because you do get victory. I mean, you, you talk about having hope. How mm -hmm. did that develop for you over time? I, it, I'm a work in progress. I, I still mm -hmm. struggle with it. Um, yeah, I... I I, I don't have it nailed down yet. I still work at it every day, and, mm -hmm. and I'm learning all the time. And, uh, Pamela, you, you have a bunch of messes, as you call them, mm -hmm. uh, throughout, throughout the book. I yeah. punch myself in the eye. Some are very uh, funny. Others are really mm -hmm. kind of heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. uh, 
how do you see God's hand working in, in both of those different kinds of scenarios? Yeah. Well, I think one of the themes in my book is about grace. It's a, grace is a big deal to me, and humor is a big deal to me. Um, but I guess one of, the, one of the stories that I think is a good, good story to mention is a story called Garage Key. And it's about my husband's uncle, Pete. And he was a carpenter, and he was also a pastor. And he, but he made his living as a, as a carpenter. So he had a, a detached garage outside. It was also his tool shed. And one day he saw a man attempting to steal his tools mm -hmm. out of his tool shed. And rather than call the police, he approached the man and just said, you don't have to do that. You don't have to, you don't have to take my tools. My tools are available to you anytime. Mm -hmm. And he reached in and he gave him his key. And um, later that day, one of the family members saw the man return attempting to use the key and it appeared that he was just trying to see if it worked and it did and he just left quietly. Many years later at Uncle Pete's funeral, the man returned wearing the key around his neck mm. and he told family members that that act of grace and compassion changed his life. Mm -hmm. he never stole again, he went into the carpentry business and um, yeah, that's, wow. I, lo I love that story because for one thing, I really didn't write it. It just, God wrote it mm -hmm. and I put it down on paper. And I think it's, it's something that I aspire to that I would be able to talk to people about Christ by the way I treat other people mm -hmm. and not try and clobber people over the head with what they should and shouldn't do, but just so that I display compassion and grace and love in my life. You know, you, we, we joke about you punching yourself in the mm -hmm. eye accidentally or unknowingly. Mm -hmm. um, but for other people, you know, for you, it was a punch in the eye. You, 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 you know, compare that to overthinking things. Mm -hmm. For other people, it's gaining weight gain. It's overeating because mm -hmm. we all have something that we're dealing with trying mm -hmm. to mask something that's, you know, that needs to come out and be dealt with. Now that you are walking through that, what would you suggest to other people how they can avoid sabotaging their lives and living in the grace of God? For me, the thing that works is to get quiet, mm -hmm. to try and shut down some of the distractions and to not rely on myself because that's my tendency, that's my go-to, to try and prepare. If, I, if there's something that I need to do that's, that's on my calendar, if I'm going to try and speak in front of a group or go to an audition or, you know, whatever it is. I, I typically try and just do it all myself. I try and, you know, I'll memorize things just ad nauseum, just, just prepare and prepare and prepare. And the truth is you can't really prepare for everything. But one of the lessons I've learned is that it's just not up to me. It's really not on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. he's, he's got it. And if I trust in him, if I listen for his his messages, his inspiration, that it's, it comes through me more. Mm -hmm. Pam, you've got a lot of uh, references to scripture uh, mentioned mm -hmm. in, in uh, I Punch Myself in the Eye, but no mm -hmm. direct Bible links or, or yeah. verses. Uh, that seems very intentional. Why, yeah. why did you do that? Um, I like to kind of fly under the radar a little bit with that. I think for me, I learn best if, if someone is not just laying something out for me. If, I, if someone plants maybe seeds or just hints at things and sort of piques my interest, I learn better that way. Mm -hmm. I, I, if, I, if I find it on my own, it's, it's better for me. And so I try and do that with other people. I, I point to scripture in the Bible and in the book. And um, yeah, I paraphrase and I talk about it, but I would rather people find it or on their own. The final word is on their yeah. own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also found it interesting in reading your backstory that, you know, coming from your background, mm -hmm. you know, being adopted, uh, mm -hmm. that you are now reaching out to others in Guatemala. Tell us about mm -hmm. your yeah. work in Guatemala. Ima Guatemala is just takes up a huge chunk of my heart. It's a, um, it's a girl's school in Guatemala City, mm -hmm. and I've been the sponsor coordinator um, since I think 2008, and I get to go there every year. Um, and when I, you know, I don't feel like my job is that important when I, but when I'm there, I feel like I'm doing the most important work of my life. Mm. The girls are amazing. They see me when I walk on the campus, they just start screaming for me, bam, 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 and they just tackle me. And it's just, it's, 
it's pretty pretty special. And a few years ago with the recession, we had to cut back. So we had to cut the upper grades, which really broke my heart. So now we're just pre-K to sixth grade. And it would just be a dream come true to be able to get those upper grades back. We have a handful of um, students that we can support, but we, we don't have the upper grades um, through high school. And I would just love to get them back. That's well, a critical age. It sounds like a very rewarding uh, ministry that you have there. Thank you so much for joining us, Pam. Oh, sure. Thank to you. connect with Pamela, go to PamelaCapone.com or go to Harvest-TV.com for a link to her new project. It's called I Punched Myself in the Eye. Coming up later, Brian Bush with the latest news from Israel. But up next, Pastor Mark Lance offers practical principles for resolving conflict. We'll be right back. This family just arrived from South Sudan. They've fled conflict, violence, they've suffered great trauma as well as loss. That's why we need your help to give a promise to these children who are refugees that they might have a future and that they might have a hope. We need you to act today. There are 50,000 children that we need to add to Every Child Every Day program in this year of 2016. That's why it's so important for you to contact us today. If you want to do more and be more, but your stamina runs out of steam, you need the top-selling Essential Vitamin Mineral Pack by Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez. The Doctor's Making Healthy Choices Essential Pack costs only $59.95, but the health benefits are priceless. You get Mineral Concentrate, an unsurpassed formula of trace minerals essential to good health. Omega-3 for overall vascular support and healthy brain function. Vita Sprouts, a superior form of multivitamin vitamins and you get Sol you see for a strong immune system that's mineral concentrate omega-3 vita sprouts and Sol you see an incredible value for only 59.95 and if you act now shipping is free call 1-800-965-2345 or go to mhclife.com to get the doctor's essential pack from making healthy choices that's 1-800-965-2345 or mhclife.com Hey everybody, it's Monday and I want you to think today about the difference between blame and responsibility. You see, when something goes wrong, blame determines who is at fault for what went wrong. We blame our spouse, we blame the weather, we blame our boss. But responsibility doesn't care who's at fault. Responsibility simply determines who's going to fix what went wrong. Responsibility says, okay, somebody messed up, but who is committed to changing it? You know, you can sit there all day long. You can blame people, circumstances, whatever, for what's going wrong in your life. And maybe you're justified in some of that blame. But blame's not going to fix anything. Only responsibility fixes what's wrong. So what are you blaming today? Take the time. Take the energy that you spend blaming. Take that same time and energy and taking responsibility. Because the moment you make the shift from blame to responsibility, things will get better. So on this Motivational Monday, stop playing the blame game. Get up. Fix what's wrong. Make this the best week of your life. Hello everyone, the operation to recapture the city of Mosul in Iraq from Islamic State has begun. Mosul is Iraq's second largest city and it is from there that the Islamic State leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi proclaimed his self-described caliphate a few years ago. The offensive started off with artillery being fired into the city, Kurdish Peshmerga and Iraqi government and allied forces moving into positions in the surrounding outskirts of the city. The United States says that it is playing a supportive role. It has advisors on the ground and air power above the city. The operation against the force of perhaps four to 8,000 Islamic State fighters will reportedly take several weeks to complete, and it has an allied force of between 20 to 25,000 soldiers involved. The United Nations made it clear that the assault upon Mosul could lead to a massive humanitarian disaster. The civilians left in the city number anywhere between 700,000 to just under 1.5 million 
The general expectation is that a million people will be fleeing this assault, and the need for food, water, and shelter as the winter approaches is staggering. In a related development in Syria, Turkish-backed rebels have captured the symbolically important town of Topik from the Islamic State, who featured the town prominently in its propaganda relating to an Islamic prophecy of an apocalyptic battle taking place there. And lastly, here in Israel, it is the beginning of the Sukkot holiday, otherwise known as the Feast of Tabernacles. This is the biblical celebration commemorating the children of Israel's wandering in the desert for 40 years after having, led, after having left Egypt under the direction of Moses. Friends, that's our wrap of your news. The Harvest Show continues right after this. Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my updates and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. A reminder of the number to call the LaSue Prayer Line, 1-800-365-3732, or you can email your prayer request at prayer at lasie.com. A few people have chimed in today. Joe from Colorado says, please pray with me that my knees are healed by God. I've had a great life playing sports, but now it seems like I'm paying for it. Mm. Uh, anonymous caller from Texas says, I was told if I called you that you would pray for my wife. Please pray she be healed of cancer. Consider that done. And Eugene in Indiana, has an itch all over his body and needs prayer that the Lord will deliver him of it. So plenty to pray about. I'm sure you have things to pray about in your life. We are told to pray unceasingly. I'm not sure that any of us succeed at that, but we've got 30 seconds. Why don't Let's we pray, pray now? Yeah, yes. Lord, heal my knees a long time ago. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for your healing thank power you, being manifested right now for our friends that called in and emailed, for people watching this very moment. We just extend our hands of faith to receive from you, Lord, and we thank you for that healing virtue flowing now, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, quickening mortal bodies, causing cancer to flee now in the name of Jesus and bringing healing for the glory of God. Lord, we give you the praise for it, and we thank you, Lord, for doing what only you can do in Jesus' name. The Word of God has the power to transform broken lives, but only if we share it with those who don't know the good news. Each $5 you give between now and December 31st will provide a Bible to one person. A gift of $5 provides one Bible, $25 sends five, and a gift of $180 provides a case of 36 Bibles to those in need. Pray about your gift and then call 1-800-365-3732 to give today. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.